Hello, can you hear me now? Hello, hello, hello. You should be able to hear me now, correct? Oh, and there's a lot of background noise. Hold on. You, oh, but you hear some noise in the background, right? Is that correct? Can you let me know? There's background noise. I'm trying a new microphone, by the way. That's um. That's why we are. Oh no. Okay. Okay. So yes, exactly. So. How about this is with noise and no background noise. This noise filter is amazing. You hear no background noise right now, correct? Exactly, yeah. All right, how about levels? Uh, let me try. So I need to make sure that the levels are consistent with previous streaming. So I need to. Hold on, let me mute. All right, so hello, hello, hello. So this is the sound level when with the microphone that I used to use. And now I'm going to switch to the new one. And hello, hello. That is much lower, right? So I need to crank this up. All right, so how about this? La, 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 la. How about this? Hello, hello. How about this? Now, hello, hello. Oh, that's a lot. Hello, hello. Yeah, that's a lot. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Hey, welcome everyone. Oh, that's a lot. Hello, how are you doing? Hello, how are you doing? Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, there's going to be a little bit of this today. <laughs> Bear with me, I'm doing sound testing, microphone testing. All right, hold on. Old microphone, this is my old microphone. How are you doing? New microphone, this is my new microphone. Old microphone, I'm yelling to the old microphone. New microphone, I'm yelling to the new microphone. Oops, oopsies. All right. Hello, new microphone. Oops. Wait, wait. Old microphone. This is the old microphone. New microphone. This is the new microphone. Hello, hello. Hi, hi. I think this is good. What? The new one has a lot of echo. Is that true? Uh, all right. Hello. How are you doing? Welcome to Parametric Cam. This is me. Blah, blah, blah. Boof, boof. Tico, tico. Vector, vector, vector. <laughs> All right. Oh, can someone? Okay, so this is I'm talking through the new the new microphone right now, which is here. 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 New. There's an echo in the new one. Is that true? Can we? Can? Can someone please? Uh, can someone please confirm there is echo right now? I'm using my new one. The new one. Is there echo? Uh, well, I don't know what the echo, what can we do? But I think that's the room, basically. Needs more clear, it has a little bit of echo. Hmm. All right, hold on, let's compare. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, right. Hi, welcome to Parametric Cam from my old microphone. Hi, welcome to Parametric Cam from my new microphone. 
I'm going to try again. You tell me if there's, you tell me what you think about the old and new one. Testing from my old microphone. Hi, this is Parametric Camp. Testing from my new microphone. Hi, this is Parametric Cam, new microphone. Hmm. <laughs> Copies here, Professor Chandra. <laughs> Copies here. Hmm. So, all right. So, what do we think about the new microphone then? <sighs> okay. You know what we're going to do? I like the old one more. <laughs> all right. I kind of hate this microphone, to be honest, because <laughs> it sucks up a lot of batteries. It's kind of, um, I think the new one is good. The old one is clearer. Um, all right, so let's do this because um, we need to start. I don't want I don't, I don't to keep you here doing this all morning. So I'm going to record. So here's the thing. So I'm using, just for those of you who are curious, my old microphone is this one, which is I'm currently, I'm, I'm right now talking through the new one, by the way. My old microphone is this one, which is a lapel that has a remote, and then the remote goes into my computer, and this is my old microphone. I'm speaking to the new one right now. This is the old one right here. The thing is that it uses batteries. They don't last so long. I consume a lot of batteries. I don't like it. So my friend, Saurabh, lent me this fancy microphone here which is USB connected, no, it's stereo, it has all these gain options, it's kind of nice, um, has volume, etc. It's also the one that Nono uses for his live streams. So I'm trying it out because I would wish to transition to one of these. But I would like... Um, but I would like to transition at some point to that kind of microphone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record today with the old microphone. I'm still speaking to the new one. I'm going to record from the old one. So this is the old one now. I am now streaming from the old one. And then I'm going to listen to this video that I'm recording right now. I'm going to listen to that this afternoon or in between streams or whatever I can. And I will make a decision or I will make some changes or I will do some further audio tests, whatever. But I would like to, at some point, transition to this so that I don't consume so much batteries. I hate that. And also so that I can take this to school where I can really use the portability. The fact that this is wireless right now doesn't have much use here in my, in my apartment, in my office. But for school and for the new semester we're starting we're starting in next week we're starting the introduction to computational design next week so for that i would really wish to take this one to school so yeah maybe you should move the new microphone a little closer well that i think the problem is the echo isn't it so and if the problem is the echo then i can't really solve anything by moving it closer the old one is cleaner the new one needs some adjustments i know so that when you move the new one closer to you, it sounded a bit better. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, I can't really stream like this, right? All right, hold on, let's do a test. I switched to the new microphone. New microphone from desk, new microphone, getting closer, closer, closer to my mouth. Now it's getting closer, closer. Hello, hello. How is everyone doing? Very close to my mouth. Now it's getting farther, farther away. Now on one side, now the other side, the other side, because this is stereo. And blah, 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 blah. That was a really bad sound test. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to the old one. Old one, now. Okay. And because, yes, I'm going to switch back to the old one. So what's better? What do you mean better? Better is very close to my mouth or better is going back to the old microphone? Closer is better. All right. Then that's bad news because I, I do not want to have it closer to my mouth. Mm, that's not the point. 
because I can't have it here. Uh, so, Sebastian, better what? Better closer to my mouth or better not streamer use the mic closer to the... Yeah, but I don't want to be streaming like this. Mm -mm. Not gonna happen. So if we cannot make this work from the distance, then I'm sticking to that one. Maybe I can find something that doesn't have the remote, but still does the... Um... Maybe I can find a solution like that. That would be great. And something that doesn't use batteries and can be USB recharge or something. That would be great. All right. Okay. Um, well, let me, uh, after all these sound tests, Good morning, welcome. How's everyone doing? <laughs> mm. um, just give me one second, one second. All right. Okay, sorry. Um, all right. Let me, oh, let me pull something. I need to see some stuff here. No, that's not what I wanted. What do I want? I want the stream. I want my notes here. And I want, yes. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> 20 minutes later, 13 sound tests later. Hi, this is Jose Luis here. This is Parametric Cam. We do computational design live streams. We record tutorials. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, GitHub, etc., etc. If you want to know when we go live. Also, we have a Discord server, which I'm going to post a link to on the chat, where we have offline conversations throughout the week, where we share uh, ideas with each other. We share work. We have like channels for grasshopper questions, C sharp questions. Mm, snake related programming languages, questions, that kind of stuff. And if you want to know when we go live, we typically announce it on the Discord server. We typically announce it over all our social media over there, especially Instagram. I use Instagram mostly these days. I, I dropped Facebook and Twitter is too fast for me. I'm a little old for that. And we also have a calendar that you can subscribe to. And then uh, the events of when we go live will show up. So you have them here on the link. So if you're new to the channel, we do live streams where we record tutorials and then we edit them and we put them online. If you're not new to the channel and you are already a seasoned parametric camper, then welcome back. I'm very happy that you're here with us. <laughs> Okie dokie. So what are we doing today? Mm. Today is the new, is the first day of a new beginning. It's the first day of a new beginning because because what? Well, I'm starting the semester. Next Wednesday, I start teaching uh, my flagship course, Introduction to Computational Design, here at the Design School at Harvard. And um, that's going to happen on Wednesday. So I'm actually very excited. We're going back to in-person teaching. Um, I cannot wait to have a little bit of human contact. I really appreciate that. There's a lot of safety measures in place. Well, hopefully we'll make that uh, in a way that is, hopefully not, we will make it in a way that is safe for everyone. And, um, and then here on Parametric Camp, what we're going to do is that we have done several series already. We have, oh, let me show you the work that we do here at Parametric Camp. So where is the, um, where is actually, there you go. So. This is our channel right now. Look, we're live. We're streaming right now. <laughs> and we have a bunch of playlists, like, for example, fun with WebSockets, coding jams, blah, blah, blah. But we have two main playlists, Learning C Sharp, which is a full playlist on how to learn how to code, an introduction for beginners and for designers. And we have this other playlist called Introduction to Parametric Modeling, which is basically learning grasshopper and learning computational geometry and learning all those things, right? So I would like to, I've been meaning for a long time to start a new series called Advanced Development in Grasshopper, which is basically going to be C-sharp and uh, 
scripting inside of Grasshopper and writing our own plugins and uh, maybe a little bit of Python for, for Grasshopper, etc. Well, so we, we'll see about that. So, and we're starting that today because the other day we spent, we had a really nice meeting where live on screen, we, we did this thing. We designed the curriculum of what we were going to be teaching in this, in this, in this series. And it was actually super helpful because I was writing down a list of the things that I thought we needed to go over and people from the community will help me out, give me suggestions. I, I actually want to thank, oh, I see a lot of familiar faces. Arasto, Incisar, I think I've seen you before. Sebastian, Dibak, Hex, how are you doing? Hector, Victor Lin, how are you doing? Gilang, I see a lot of familiar faces. Albert uh, in the chat, so thanks for being here. Um, anyway, so that was actually really helpful. And um, I spent some time offline just polishing it a little and like breaking it down into individual videos, etc. So you can see that here. And what we're going to do today is we're going to start doing that. We're going to start taking a look at, we're going to start recording those videos. Okay. So um, what are we going to start with? So I'm going to start with a quick intro video that will be temporary. So like, hey, welcome, this is what we're going to be doing, but I will, once we finish the full series, I will record that again with content from videos from the series. So it's going to be like a temporary welcome to the playlist while we are publishing videos there. And then we're just going to start right away um, recording those videos. How do you feel? Hmm? Ooh -hoo. Oh, and of course, like full disclaimer, if you like what you do, what we do here in the channel, maybe you want to consider liking this video. You may even want to consider subscribing to the channel. Um, you may want to join us on Discord. You may want to leave a comment. You may, I don't know, you may throw a clapping hands emoji, whatever, any kind of appreciation is appreciated. <laughs> okay. Now I need to make a banner. So you see how I have here intro to parametric modeling. I need to make a banner like that. I think I have some files that I can, oh, and I'm writing a play, I'm playing, I'm DJing tomorrow for a private party. So I'm actually writing a list of things that I, of the songs that I think I will play. Oh, have you ever, you guys need to, if you like electronic music, this one is amazing. You need to find it and I'm going to post it on the chat. DJ Enamore, I saw him live back before COVID times. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Salvador. Good morning. How are you doing? Okie dokie. So I had some illustrator files somewhere. And so... <clears throat> so I need to make that screen. And this is going to go. Hey, Lara. How are you doing? <clears throat> Good to see you again. It's been a while. Okay. All right, so I have a bunch of screens here. So maybe we can um, uh, we can edit. You're gonna see me using Illustrator, which I'm really bad at. So, all right, artboard copy. Why do I have a copy here? Uh, then I'm just gonna use this one. No. All right, so. Uh, that's going to be this one. And this is going to be called Advanced Development in Grasshopper 3D. How do you, I always, mm, I never know whether to call it Grasshopper or Grasshopper 3D. I'm going to go for with Grasshopper. Mm. Oh, what's my DJ name? <laughs> <laughs> mm, I think I'm going to keep that one a secret <laughs> for the time being. Um, yeah, because I think I'm, I'm fluctuating a little bit. I used to have a DJ name, but then I was not very... And I have an Instagram and a SoundCloud and the whole deal. And then I changed. And then... But now I may want to change back. 
I don't know what I am with that. <laughs> uh, but fine, let me, I mean, since you ask. Uh, wait, 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 wait. So, all right. So this is <laughs> fine. This is my DJ. This is my DJ person. <laughs> uh, I used to have a different name. So if you look through the Instagram, I used to be Brian Dre DJ. Now I'm Dr. Vector, but I'm not also not sure about that. So if you have suggestions for a DJ name, I will happily take them. <laughs> maybe you can post this here in the chat or maybe you can post it on the bonfire uh, on the Discord channel. <laughs> All right, I should not have done that. I'm going to regret that. I'm very, very much going to regret that. But yes, um, I used to play a lot at the GSD. I used to play a lot at Burning Man. I used to play in this club in Boston called Good Life with my friends from the Flight 617 community. Uh, we had a DJ group. It was very nice. Um, uh, Good old times. Good old times. Okay. Uh, advanced development in Grasshopper. I think I was talking. I was talking about Grasshopper 3D because the Grasshopper, the original Grasshopper parametric DJ. <laughs> um, I the the website, the old website is Grasshopper3D.com. That's a little bit why I was asking. Mm. Yeah, the SoundCloud link doesn't work because I also changed the name. You guys are very needy today, huh? Fine, I'll give you the SoundCloud too. <laughs> okay, where's my... here. Uh, all right, where are we? Okay, this is the, this is the, the SoundCloud link. I have a... I have a set that I actually liked a lot. It's from, it's very old, but it's this one here. And it was for the birthday party from Sorab, the guy who actually, who, whom I borrowed the microphone from right now. That, I like that link a lot, that, 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 that set. Yeah, you can satisfy our interest in the view like with Instagram. Lara. You're making me, I don't know what I'm going to do with you, with you folks. Ah, can't seem to get enough. <laughs> All right. So what are we doing? Advanced, advanced um, development, grasshopper, use artboards. Yeah, use number five. And then... I think it, this is 72, correct? And that is, yes. All right. So that should be good, right? Hospelgar. Hey, Jospelgar, how are you doing, sir? What, wh where? All right, okay. Oh yeah, you were asking on the live, on the live channel recently. Mm hmm. Okay. Anyway, so we have this. And so that should be good. And then what I need to do is I need to come here and add another bitmap here. Where... Nah. Okay. And then I'm going to load this from whatever we want to do. How's everyone doing? Mm -hmm. De -de -de. We need to see what's going to happen around here. I missed this here. No idea how I could spend so much time away. <laughs> Thank you, Lara. I've also missed it, actually. I haven't, we haven't, um, we haven't uh, streamed in a, in a while. There's a lot of people connected today. What's going on? Is it is it because of my DJ thing? Do you actually, should I just stop doing live streams and just like DJ live here for you folks? Would you like that? <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. All right.
right and oops oh what here no there you go no here exactly all right all right this is it right oh yeah Hector I I actually I think I saw somewhere online that you also DJ huh what kind of music do you play um I am I started with dance music I like 90s dance music then I, I liked EDM but that was, that was a very brief period then I moved into deep house and now I like progressive and pro I like progressive techno uh, that's my that's my deep progressive techno that's really what I like playing mm -hmm. hey Sujai how are you doing sir okay and um, all right what's going on here Ooh. Uh oh I think they're going to oh no <laughs> Saurab my friend is telling me that they might trash this sculpture that we did oh no oh my god okay all right focus 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 okay so let's start uh the video where, where is the video No, this is not what I... Okay, here. All right. All right. So what am I going to say? I'm going to say, what is this course? What is this about? Um, I'm going to say, what is this series about? Uh, I want to remind what the assumptions are. You should know how to write C sharp. You should know Grasshopper, because I'm not going to cover those. And I will not get into geometry stuff. And that... We will be doing ex ah, this is going to be cool. We're going to be doing exercises where we're going to build up incrementally into a Grasshopper plugin. Uh, Zook music, Zookable music. Huh, interesting. Very Miami of you. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, Ooh. all right. Wait, wait, wait. Interference. Yes. I'm a little bright, right? My my forehead it's like I need to maybe bring down the lights uh, hold on let me try something because the light is very intense right now uh, 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 brightness hmm Yeah, I look like I have a better color. I don't look like a vampire anymore, right? Okay. What about this thing? Hmm. All right. <clears throat> okay, so let's do this. And the noise filter is good. Yes, it is. All right, let's do this. Hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hi, this is Jose Luis here, and welcome to Parametric Camp. Um, uh, now, starting over, starting over again. <laughs> starting over again. <clears throat> Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp, and welcome to our new series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. We are starting a new series where I would like to teach you advanced topics on how to do custom development inside of Grasshopper, which is the visual programming language for Rhino. But if you're here, you should probably already know that. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, well, let me start over again. That, that was not nice. That was not a nice thing to say, right? <laughs> All right, let me start over again. <clears throat> Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp, and I would like to welcome you to our new series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. In this series, what I would like to teach you is how to go a little deeper 
into customizing the way you use Grasshopper by instead of just using vanilla components or just uh, um, yeah, I know, I know. Where is the coffee, right? Hmm. Where is the coffee? I'm actually done. I need another one. I need a refill. Uh, who's gonna help me with that? Um, how's a DJ stand that turns music files into geometry as a plugin? <sighs> Arasto. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll think about that. <laughs> let's put a pin on that one. Let's 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 record the series first, and then we can start doing music plugins. <laughs> All right, um, mm, mm, where was I? Yes. Um, mm. Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp and welcome to our new series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. In this series, what I would like to teach you is how to go beyond the standard set of tools that are available in Grasshopper, the visual programming language for Rhino, and, um, and to learn how to start customizing them and accessing the raw power that is hidden behind Grasshopper components. So in this series, I would like to teach you, for example, how to use the C-sharp programming language to script your own components. I would like to teach you techniques, how to do custom previews, custom baking, and custom many things that are not accessible from regular components. And then we will be leading up into how to actually develop and write our own components so that they can be published as a plugin. So because Whenever you download plugins from someone else, those people have actually gone through some development so that they can provide you with these files that you install and show up and give you additional functionality inside of Grasshopper. So I think it's going to be super interesting. This is a, an advanced, um, it's, it's going to be an advanced series. So the assumptions here is that if you are watching this is because you already know how to write C sharp code uh, no, 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 no. Let me start over again. Starting over again. <clears throat> Hello, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp, and I would like to welcome you to our new series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. In this series, which is currently work in progress, I'm recording it as we are, as we are uh, talking right now. Um, in this series, what I would like to teach you is to go beyond the standard set of tools that Grasshopper, the visual programming language for Rhinoceros, that the standard set of tools that Grasshopper gives you. And I would like to teach you how to customize those tools and how to create your own components inside of Grasshopper. So I'm going to be teaching you a lot of things such as, for example, how to use C-sharp scripting within Grasshopper, how to customize the way grass, uh, components look and behave with custom displays, with like um, many, other, many other tricks that I will teach you, building up to, a, to um, the goal of this, the, the main goal of this series, which is teaching you how to write your own plugins for Grasshopper. Whenever you download a plugin from someone, that person has had to go through the development process in order to create that file that you can download, install, and have new components in Grasshopper that give you additional functionality. So we're going to be building up <clears throat> so that you will, by the end of this series, know how to do that and be able to make your own components and offer them back to the community if that's what you want to do. Now, this is going to be an advanced series so the assumption is that if you are here is because you're already familiar with Grasshopper, with the way, the standard way of how it's used. And if you're not, we have an introduction to parametric modeling series that you're more than welcome to, to check. Link will be in the comments in the, in, the, in the description and it may pop up as a card here. The other assumption is also that you know how to write C sharp code. And if you don't know how to do that, then uh, we also have a playlist called Learning C Sharp Introduction to Programming for Designers. And that this, the link to that will be also in the description and maybe will be popping up as a card somewhere up here. And the, also, uh, the other assumption is that you also familiar, you're also familiar with geometry manipulation 
and geometry processing. If you are familiar with Grasshopper, you're probably familiar with that already, because in this series, I will focus on the technical aspects of developing code and developing components inside of Grasshopper. And I will use a lot of examples of geometric manipulation, but I will not go deeper into why those geometrical manipulations, what they mean, um, et cetera, et cetera. I, I have other series where we talk specifically about geometry. This one is about development for Grasshopper, okay? So if you think you are ready for that, you are more than welcome to join this series. And another thing that I would like to say is that what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be giving you nuggets of knowledge and technical skills, but in, in Intertwined with that, I'm going to be showcasing these techniques with examples. And those examples are going to be, I'm going to be incrementally, step by step, building components, prototyping these components, and then end up building them into a full fledged Grasshopper plugin that I think I'm going to call Parametric Cam Toolbox or something like that, right? It's going to be a mix match of a lot of things. It's not going to be like a nice, clean, uh, plugin, but we will incrementally build up to such a plugin so that by the end of this series, you will have that plugin an, as an example uh, for you to try. All right. We will focus mostly on the C sharp programming language, but maybe we will do a little bit with Python, etc. We will see about that. And um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Python. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> anyway, uh, and this series is currently work in progress. So I'm publishing, I'm recording videos and publishing them as we're speaking right now. So if you get to the end and you want more, just wait because we're still making them. All right. So thank you very much. And I'm going to start by on the next video discussing why should we do this? Why should we write our own code in Grasshopper in the first place? Thank you very much and see you on the next video. All right. All right. Do you know which plugin would be super fun and super useful? A plugin that reads that you connect your MIDI controllers to so your turntables, you connect them to the computer, and then you can read values from the MIDI controller, like the turntables, like the knobs, whatever, and then use those knobs and the sliders in your physical controller as slider values inside of Grasshopper. How cool would that be? Huh? Mm, just throwing it out there, Arasto slash Hector. Mm, just throwing it out there. Anyway, that was the intro video. Um, I think it was longer than I expected, but that happens all the time. And now I want to, the next video that I want to do is why should we write Grasshopper? Uh, mm, why should we write Grasshopper? Let me go back to here. <laughs> Yarudi, oh, someone's been watching my GST lectures, huh? <laughs> Very nice, power and freedom. That's exactly what we want. Thank you. That's why we're writing. You know what? I'm going to start. <laughs> I'm going to start the video just like that. You're right. <laughs> because we want power and freedom. Ooh. I love it. I forgot. I forgot that I used to say that. <laughs> Thank you, Jerudy. All right. So now what should I show on the screen for this one? Uh, also, I have a question. So yeah, about this, I want to ask people in the chat right now. Where should I be for this series? Should I be here on the lower right side of the screen? Or should I be over all the way over there? Uh, should I be? Where should I be? On the right? On the left? <laughs> on the right? <laughs> on the left? Where should I be? Because I, I feel that here, I will typically have the Rhino screen and then I will have the Grasshopper screen over there at the right. So I think that it would make more sense to stay here. But most videos, most other videos, I've had them here. But I feel that if I'm going to be doing Grasshopper, 
Grasshopper scripting. Uh, the Grasshopper scripting. What left? I think so too. I think I should go left, like here, because typically I will have a Rhino screen here, then I will have Grasshopper over there. And then when I'm going to be doing a lot of C sharp scripting, so I will probably like double click and have the floating window somewhere over there, I guess. That side makes more sense to me. I think so, right? The problem though is that as soon as we move to Visual Studio, the moment we move to Visual Studio, then it's going to be the other way because code is going to be here. So I, my head will be on the way of the lower lines of code. So I will have to transition to the other side. I mean, I can do that. We can just have video on separate sides. It doesn't really matter, right? This is my OCD kicking in right now. All right, so I'm going to start. Yes, we're going to do left side for Grasshopper, and then I will move to the right whenever we go back to Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. All right. OK, so now going back, what are... OK, so yes, so I'm going to open some Rhino. I'm going to open some Rhino. How about flipping the Rhino Grasshopper window? Ooh, I think I'm too old for that. <laughs> Rasta, you mean, what, you mean doing this? You mean doing that? Push. Wow. Can we do that, actually? I have never, I've been using Grasshopper for 12 years already. I have never had the screens like this. I feel so uneasy, <laughs> so uneasy. Swap Rhino and Grasshopper windows. Oh my God, Gonzalo, is that you from from the ETH? Is that is that that Gonzalo? All right, <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, how are you doing? Say, come on, das. Uh, I'm very happy to see you here. Gonzalo, Arasto, do you folks use Grasshopper like this? I have never in my life used it. Like, I feel so unbalanced right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is very weird to me. Um, by the way, Gonzalo, you know what? It would be amazing if you took over the the Python, the Python part of this series, which I really, really don't want to do. <laughs> and I know you're amazing at that front. By the way, can I, can I give a shout out? I'm going to give a shout out with Gonzalo Casas. Where are you? Yeah, sorry, you showed up here. Now you get you get a shout out. And for that, I'm going to go to the other side here. Yes. So Gonzalo is currently a researcher at the ETH in Zurich. He works with the Grammatian Color Research Team. Is that true? If I say something that is not true, just correct me, please. And he is an extremely savvy developer. He's also one of the main contributors to the robotic branch of the Compass project, a huge, amazing Python library for computational design. And uh, I'm a huge fan of his work. So thanks for being here. <laughs> All right. Yes. Oh, and by the way, he is going to be teaching a workshop at the next Acadia workshops. What are the workshops? Uh, uh, Acadia workshops. What are these workshops here? Um, I think you are all the way down here, correct? Yes. There you go. With Stefana Parascio from Princeton and Romana, who's also from the ETH. And I have never met Beverly or Edward, but I'm going to assume that they're also amazing people if Stefana Gonzalo and Romana, whom I'm a huge fan of, have brought them over. So unfortunately, um, the workshop has been sold out for three weeks already. <laughs> but if you're interested, I will. Uh, if you're interested, like sometimes people drop registrations. So um, just keep checking, see if uh, if somebody drops and you can join. It's going to be amazing. 
And correct me if I'm wrong, Gonzalo, but you're going to be controlling the robots at Stefana's lab in Princeton. Is that correct? Or are you going to be controlling them remotely from the ETH? Huh? I don't know. You let us know in the chat, OK? This is what happens when you show up. You get a shout out. <laughs> All right. Now, going back to the main topic, I don't know how I feel about this, but I see, I see a point about having stuff here and then the output showing up here. Um, but I'm, I think I'm too old for this. But, and we need, but we need to make a decision about this right now, correct? So, I mean, I think I'm thinking of something where I have the component here, I have the out component, and then I click here, and maybe we can dock this here on the top. And then here is where we write, maybe. And then I can be here on the right hand side. <clears throat> I wonder, I wonder, wonder, wonder. I'm still taking suggestions, by the way. Or we could do this and then no, and then we could dot this here and then we could just uh, have it here and then have a screen here and then my head is on the way and then I could be here Hmm. I think I'm going to go for this arrangement. Because I think it's a, I feel it's a bit more balanced, but that's definitely my OCD. Like geometry here, coding over there, me here. Because I feel that if I do. Yeah, and then here we have some outputs. Because I'm if I if my head is in the way of the geometry is fine. <clears throat> and also we've done the whole parametric modeling series like this. So I think for consistency. <clears throat> uh, I think for consistency with the other videos, I think I'm just going to. All right, I think I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to, to keep it like this. <clears throat> All right, mm, done. I'm going to keep it like this. So I'm, I'm going to be on the left for the grasshopper part and I will just move to the right for, I mean, there's no, it doesn't make a difference. It's not, it doesn't really matter, really. Um, now I want to load a small definition there, which I'm going to bring in from the intro to parametric modeling. What's a good, what's something that is not a lot? The hanging cloth example. Uh, blah, 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 blah. No, the, the Berlin Holocaust. Oh, no. I want to use this one. And what about, are we doing profiler? Yep. Uh, oh. I'm going to hide this and I'm going to do some ghosted. All right. Mm. Lara, I think, I think only administrators are allowed to post uh, 
coming to the chat. So here is the link to all the workshops at Acadia this year. Uh, so I don't think anyone can post. So you can only share stuff on the Discord, actually. All right, so I have this here. So what I want to say now is that and this is the logic and uh, this is the logic. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so let's let's just let's just start. I'm going let me crank this up a little bit because I would like to have like some I would like to have like this component be I would like to have a profiler. Yeah, exactly. That that's what I wanted. Exactly. I want this over. I want this. Uh, yes. I want to discuss performance actually. Um take me to Arctic here. Ah. All right. Okay. So let's let's do this. Hi. This is Jose Luis at Parametric Camp. And let me follow up with uh, the previous video where I introduced the new series that we just are just recording. Intro. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, blah, no. Because this video is going to be permanent. So I don't need to talk about new or blah, blah, blah. But going over again. Hi. This is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp. And let me follow up with my previous video where I introduced this series advanced development in Grasshopper. And let me first ask you, why do we even need to get into advanced development? Why are, why is Grasshopper in itself? Why is it not enough? Why do I need to get into the nitty gritties of learning how to code and writing code inside of Grasshopper and learning how to do development? Cause like Grasshopper is fine. It works great, right? And that is true. Grasshopper is actually a really good tool uh, and it's a great introductory tool for many people to algorithmic thinking and to computational design because it provides this metaphor of boxes, each box being um, a self-contained operation that has some inputs that are coming from the left then and then inside there is some code that is working with those inputs to generate some information and then that information is typically output through the right hand side of the components, right? And this model is very good for introduction as an introductory platform because it lets people focus on <clears throat> the on connecting and creating relationships by connecting these things with wires without the nitty gritties of having to learn how to write computer code. So it, it is great for it has many advantages. It's an easy introduction, it's very visual, it's great for beginners, it's great for visual artists, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. However, the problem, there are some problems with this model, which can get, um, can get old very soon. And the problems are that, first of all, um, it's, um, it's each component is made up of these inputs, these outputs, and some code inside of the component that works to turn those inputs into those outputs. And um, once we, <clears throat> going over, starting over again, starting over again. I need to get used to not start over from the beginning, but just stop, think about what I want to say and keep recording again. So <clears throat> let me start over again. Uh, oh, and I didn't say because we want power and freedom, right? Where are you, sir? 
Yarudi. <laughs> I forgot to say that we want power and freedom. <laughs> Woohoo! <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> I'm going to try to, if I don't know what else to say, just stop the video, think about it, and then continue the video. Just edit it all together. I need to remember to do that. <clears throat> Let's go. Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp. And I would like to follow up on my previous video, the introduction to this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper, where um, I would like to discuss in the first place, why do we need to do advanced development? Why do we even want to bother writing our own code inside of Grasshopper or developing our own plugins? Why is that an advantage for us? Well, let's first look, go back and think in what Grasshopper is. Grasshopper is, is an introductory tool is made up of a uh, flopped again. And I forgot freedom, power and freedom. <laughs> All right, starting over again. <clears throat> Hi. This is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp, and I would like to follow up on my previous video on this series, Advanced Grasshopper Development, where um, I would like to discuss why do we even want to bother doing development in Grasshopper? Why do we even want to bother writing code and creating our own plugins, our own, etc.? Why is that? Grasshopper is great, it's easy, it's introductory, etc. Why would we want to mess up with it and make our lives so difficult? Well, um, you probably know me already from other videos. The first thing I'm going to say is that, of course, we want to do that because we want power and because we want freedom. Uh, and customizing always leads us to those two things. But, um, but that's a little high level. Let's actually look into the details. What is Grasshopper? Grasshopper is so successful because it provides this model called visual programming by which each operation that we want to do geometrically is represented by this thing called a component, which is a box that, where the metaphor that it provides to the user is, you only have to take care of what are you providing as an input, what is the data that the component needs to use to work, and we will give you the output, the result of the operation. But anything that happens inside, it's not, it's, it's abstracted away from the user, the user doesn't have to take care of that, they, the user, only needs to care about creating the tree of geometrical relations by dropping these components and correctly linking them with wires, which is a very nice metaphor for beginners, for people who are learning, and um, where it's already enough to have to deal with learning all the geometric implications of doing this, but it doesn't have the overhead of having to learn how to write computer code. So in this sense, Grasshopper is a fantastic tool as an, introductory, as an introductory platform for people who are, have no experience in computational design and they want to learn algorithmic modeling. All right, that was a pause. And now I'm going to think what I'm going to say next. I'm going to go into the disadvantages. <clears throat> However, some of, the, some of the disadvantages of using Grasshopper for people who are getting more in the expert domain of things or when you're already fam very familiar with the tool is that um, you you're hit some limits very soon. And those limits are, for example, the fact that uh, Grasshopper has pretty good performance, but it's not fantastic performance. The idea is that because every operation, every component is in 
encapsulating a bunch of code and it needs to um, have additional code to uh, parse the inputs, parse the outputs, convert them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you can think of each component as a tiny, tiny program, and then have each component has a lot of over. A lot of, I'm making a really bad job at explaining this, so I'm going to start over again. Starting over again. Now, for those users who are already very proficient in Grasshopper and they know how it works and they can really create amazing definitions, um, sometimes Grasshopper, you can hit the limitations of vanilla Grasshopper very easily. And some of those limitations are, for example, the fact that performance-wise, Grasshopper is actually pretty good, but it's not amazing. And it's not amazing because if you think about it, each component is... Um, a tiny program on its own. It has a bunch of code that works on translating the inputs from the outputs, but it also has a lot of other code, a lot of overhead about how to take inputs, how to take the outputs, convert them between native Grasshopper types and Rhino types, do the, um, the exchange between them, showing up on the screen with a particular icon, etc., etc. So that's why we have by the fact that we have this modularity of components, it has a lot of overhead. So if instead of working with components that exchange data between them, we just have like a big fat component that does all the work, then performance wise is actually much, much better. So we will see that in this playlist, in this series very soon. On top of that, um, it could be argued that if you are reaching an expert level in Grasshopper, you may actually want to know what is going on behind the hood. Inside of the subdivide surface component, what is the code? What are the operations that are happening inside that are giving me all these points that are subdividing the surface into an equal grid of UV points? Because you are already at a, that expert level, right? So in that sense, Grasshopper, because it provides this black box model of not having to deal with code or not having to care with it about it, it's really good for beginners, but when you're an expert and you're actually asking yourself those questions, I ask my question, myself those questions all the time, then um, it has the limitations that you can't really learn more or learn deeper what's going on by just using these components. You need to move on to uh, writing your own or finding other sources, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not great for learning uh, past the expert, the advanced, the advanced level. Now, also, uh, large definitions in Grasshopper can be really confusing. I don't know if you've ever heard the term Grasshopper spaghetti, but um, <laughs> basically, I don't have an example right now, but when you write large Grasshopper definitions and then basically you see this like twine of wires connecting things with each other, it can get really messy. And you need to be really good at grouping things together with colors, giving them names, etc., so that things are legible. Uh, so it, there are many authors and many people who believe that large computer programs are much easier to read than large grasshopper definitions just because computer programs are typically a line-by-line -line kind of situation. So you can read them this way more or less, this is not entirely true, but you can read them sequentially and they're easier to understand for a human mind. Whereas here, because you're branching out so much and you have so many things interconnected, it's very difficult to keep a linear logic of, of the work, right? So large definitions can be tedious to understand, as opposed to perhaps large computer programs. And <clears throat> last but not least, um, there's the lack of customization problem. So with, this, with Vanilla Grasshopper, we can't really go fine-grained customizing many things, as for example, custom previews, automatic things baking onto the screen. Uh, there are like some things that we can't really do unless we access deeper functionality that is hidden from us. So in that sense, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in that sense, by using scripting within Grasshopper and by writing our own components, we can actually access all that power and we can overcome and like jump 
uh, a level of expertise significantly with, within Grasshopper. And last but not least, when if you want to share some kind of process, some kind of new functionality, some amazing geometric algorithm that you have defined, that you have designed, sharing it as a Grasshopper definition, it's typically not great. Grasshopper has some tools, like you can cluster things together and you can turn them into one component and you can password protect this so that people don't cannot access your source code if you are not interested in that. But um, it's a much more elegant, clean and performative solution to, instead of doing that, just writing your own components, compiling them and providing them as a plugin for other people to use. That is much cleaner, much better, and it's the standard way uh, that people contribute to the Grasshopper ecosystem. And it's uh, how people do research, write papers about Grasshopper, that components that they build, etc., etc. So in this series, we're going to delve deeper and take a look at what's going on inside of this component. And we're actually going to reproduce many popular components, like how do we make a point? How do we deconstruct a point? How do we subdivide a surface? In UV points, we're definitely going to copy this component. It's very, very useful as a learning as a learning tool. And we're going to delve deeper about what's hiding inside components. What is the code that is written? How can we write our own components so that we can go past that uh, advanced Grasshopper user level and we can be like really experts on how things how things work Grasshopper wise. All right, we're going to start by learning how to use scripting within Grasshopper. So I'm going to learn, teach you how to write your own components inside of Grasshopper itself. And then once we have a good grasp of that, then we will transition to moving outside of Grasshopper, creating Grasshopper components in a development environment, aka Visual Studio, and then how to compile them into native Grasshopper plugins that we can load in Grasshopper. Okay. So if you're excited about learning how to do that, just stay with me, stay in this series, because then in the next video, we're going to start getting hands on. All right. And in the meantime, if you like what you're seeing, then maybe consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, saying hi on the chat, uh, leaving a comment, you know, all those things uh, that are common YouTube gratitude tokens or however you say it. Anyway, thank you very much and see you on the next video where we're going to start with the fundamentals of how to script inside of Grasshopper. Bye bye. All right. Ooh, 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 Raphael, it's been a while. How are you doing, sir? Sanat. Oh, I'm very happy to see so many excited people. Ooh, ooh, let's do this. <laughs> All right. So I want to not save this. I also don't want to save this one. I don't want to save any of these. And um, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And I need to take a bio break. So can you give me one minute? I will be right back. Hold on. Oh, ho, ho. All right. What is next? Huh? We're going to get hands on. So 
we're going to oh let me write a couple notes here uh, uh, uh. Uh, I am writing myself some notes for when I edit the videos. Uh, uh, okay. Um, do I want to do that there? Oh. No, I'm going to create another file. Ooh, sorry. Uh, okay, so that's going to be... Oops. Oh, all right. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I got this here. Uh, wonderful. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, Grasshopper. Oh, no, Grasshopper, not Grasshopper. YouTube was telling me that uh, there was something wrong with the audio. Okie dokie. So what's next? Oh, fundamentals of scripting in Grasshopper. So let's, um, let's go back to the basics now. Hmm. All right. Okay. All right. So, sorry, I was a little distracted. So, what are we doing next? Okay. So, in the next video, I would like to <clears throat> show scripting. Okay. Uh, so, this video is going to be about... Um, this video is going to be about dropping the C sharp component, talking about the inputs. Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, I'm going to talk in general about scripting. And then I'm going to talk about that there's C sharp scripting, Visual Basic, Python, etc., etc. Did I say the P word? Ugh, ugh, my mouse, my mouth itches. <laughs> ugh, ugh. <laughs> oh my god anyway um uh, blah, 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 blah. what are, what are, what am i going to so yes okay sorry i'm a little distracted today i have i i want i want i just re... yes anyway <sighs> <clears throat> um, Hector. Kashik, I'm not a I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, so I'm not sure I get the um, the reference. <laughs> I know that it's a Harry Potter reference. I just don't know what it means, <laughs> which is already good enough, I think. No, mm -hmm. I got some. I got some of my harry potter facts uh there i just don't know them very deep <laughs> anyway so yeah so this <clears throat> all right <clears throat> okay <clears throat> Ah, all right. Sorry. <laughs> I never cease to learn new things with you. 
quotes. I love it. <clears throat> All right. So, fundamentals of scripting in Grasshopper. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp, and it's time to get hands-on uh, with doing some stuff in this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. And the first topic that we're going to address in this series on how to customize and how to um, go a little bit lower level in writing our own components inside of Grasshopper is going to be using scripting inside of Grasshopper. So what is a scripting in the first place? Scripting is basically computer programming, but typically scripting is a word that is reserved for uh, when you write computer code within the framework that shall be using that computer code. It's, um, it's a way of saying that... Uh, uh, I got confused, but I was on the right track. I was on the right track. Um, <clears throat> okay. All right. So, yeah, let me start again because that's what I wanted to say. <clears throat> Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp, and I think it's time to start getting hands on in this series, advanced development in Grasshopper. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to learn how to customize the behavior of Grasshopper and create our own components by using scripting inside of Grasshopper. But what is scripting in the first place? Well, scripting is writing computer code, like computer programming is. It's just that scripting is a term that it usually refers to writing computer code inside an environment where that it... Okay starting over again, starting over again. And let me think about what do I want to say for scripting. I want to say that scripting is writing computer code inside the environment that is meant to execute that computer code and with the goal of customizing the behavior of that environment. That's what I wanted to say. And I want to say that that is as opposed to writing code for um, standalone applications such as Windows application, mobile apps, etc., etc. So, yeah, it's like scripting is like customizing the behavior of some of some program using code inside of that program. That's what I want to say, exactly. So I'm going to start over and try to say it. <clears throat> Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp. And I think it's time to get hands-on in this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. And the first thing that we're going to do, the first thing that I'm going to teach you in order to write your own components here in Grasshopper is going to be to how to use scripting inside of Grasshopper. But what is scripting in the first place? Well, scripting is writing computer code, writing computer programs, just like any other uh, com uh, computer programming work. Oh, starting over again. Sorry, folks, you're, you're so patient with me doing this. I appreciate that a lot. Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp. And uh, I think it's time to get hands-on in this serious advanced development for Grasshopper. And the first thing that I'm going to teach you is how to use scripting to create your own components. Now, what is scripting? scripting is basically writing computer code, just like in any other platform. The only thing is that the term scripting is typically, is, is typically more specifically writing computer code inside an environment that is going to be running that code and with the goal of customizing how that environment actually behaves. This is as opposed to, for example, writing computer code with the goal of creating a standalone application that will be executed by Windows, such as like a Windows app, a Mac app, a Linux application, or writing a mobile app, for example. Uh, here, the goal is instead of having a standalone thing, 
being able to write code inside an environment to customize that environment, okay? And Grasshopper is actually really great at giving us tools to do that because it has three main ways of allowing you to write, to do scripting inside of it. So if we go here to the math tab, you can see that there's a full category called scripting that has some evaluations and expression. And you already know that I love the expression component if you have followed me on the introduction to parametric modeling series. But you can see that we have here three components that allow us scripting. We have the visual basic one, we have the Python one, and we have the C sharp one. So what are these components actually about? Well, these components are very interesting because what they do is that they allow you to double click on them. And when you double click on them, this window pops up that is a small development environment where you can write computer code. This works for the C sharp one. This works for the Visual Basic one, which is very similar. And this works for the Python one, which just popped up on my other window, which is slightly different, but it's very similar as well in behavior. What is the difference between the three of them? Well, as you probably have guessed, they are three different programming languages. So you can script in Visual Basic, Python, or C Sharp. All right. And what's very interesting is that each one of these allow you to customize the inputs, so what you feed it as data, to customize the output, and then to also have like a console kind of environment where you can print things, but not uh, change the behavior of the component, all right? I will explain very soon on the next video how to actually work with this. Um, well, what we're going to do in this series is that, first of all, the visual, we're not going to use the Visual Basic component at all because Visual Basic was a, or is, a programming language that had been used for Windows applications since the very early onset of Windows. But these days, as of 2021, it's kind of declining and I don't think it's a very popular language anymore. And basically the functionality is so, so similar to C Sharp that honestly, between you and I, I don't see why you would use Visual Basics as opposed to C Sharp right now. There are some people that uh, believe that Visual Basic is better for interactivity things, so like keyboard, mouse, like clicking on the screen, that kind of event handling uh, behavior. But since we're not going to be doing much of that, and Grasshopper is also not about that, it's about the geometry and stuff, uh, we're not going to be using Visual Basic at all in this series. Now, there's the Python component, and you probably already know that Python is a super popular language and that um, um, people believe that it's really great for syntax, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I have very different opinions, if you already know me as well. <laughs> but, um, but it's a very popular one and it's getting a lot of traction and I see more and more people using, doing scripting inside of Grasshopper using Python, okay? Now, we may or may not touch upon Python development at the very end of this series. I can't promise right now. So if the videos are there, then I decided to do it. If they're not, then maybe sometime in the future. But if you're a Python person and you're savvy, many of the things that you will learn here in this series will be translatable and applicable to Python development inside of Grasshopper. The main reason why we're not going to do Python, the main language in this series, but instead we're going to be using the C Sharp scripting component as the main as the main development uh, component in this series is because, first of all, um, we already have the learning C Sharp playlist uh, going on. So maybe that's somewhere here in the description or as a card, whatever. So you can already go to that playlist if you want to learn how to write C Sharp code. But most importantly, this is the main reason actually, is that whenever we transition from scripting inside of Grasshopper, to writing our own native plugins that we can load inside of Grasshopper, like Machina, like Firefly, like Pufferfish, like all these components that people contribute to the community. Once we do that jump, the only way to develop plugins for Grasshopper in particular is using the C Sharp programming language. So that's why I believe that learning C Sharp is more beneficial because the transition to then developing native plugins is almost seamless. It's almost, almost identical 
and you will see that very soon. There's just unfortunately no way of writing, of using Python to write native plugins in Grasshopper as of, um, as of September of 2021 that I'm recording this. So um, that's why I have chosen to use C Sharp as the main component that we will be talking about and the language that we will be using for most of this series. But again, if you're a Python person, and you know, no one is perfect, um, <laughs> if you're a Python person, maybe by the end of this series, I will make like a couple of videos or two or three videos talking about how everything that we have learned can also be developed using Python. All right. I know that many people in the community will be really grateful about that. Anyway, so let's move on to the next video where I'm, we're actually going to take a closer look at this folk here. And then let's see how to customize inputs, outputs, and let's start writing our very first code inside of the Grasshopper uh, C Sharp scripting component. All right. If you like what you see so far, maybe like this video, maybe subscribe to the channel, maybe leave a nice comment, whatever, whatever your, your, your gen is. All right. Thank you very much. See you in the next video. Beautiful. So, Salvador, do you approve of what I just said? Um, how do you feel? <laughs> huh? You can give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Is there a thumbs me? Is there, is there a thumbs like this? <laughs> I don't know of such a thing. All right. So that was the that was scripting in Grasa in Grasa. Okay. Um, Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think we're going to, I think we're going to do one more video where I'm going to explain the C sharp component. Uh, well, I'm going to explain the C-sharp component and I'm going to do a couple of examples with simple arithmetic like additions, blah, 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 whatever. I'm going to explain inputs, outputs, the out console. I'm going to override the text, etc. And then we're going to take a, a lunch break. We're doing a double stream today. Uh, just so you know, we'll have another live stream. I think I have it scheduled for 2 p.m but I may want to start a little earlier. Yeah, Koshik, yeah, this camera has a very aggressive white balance. So it is true that if when the light, when the light levels are very different, uh, it switches, it switches colors very fast. That's actually a very good point. I wonder if I can stop that. I wonder if there are options to... Okay, no, that's not... I wonder if there's options to control the behavior of the camera. Oh, if any, if anyone was over, uh, ever curious, I'm using a Logitech Brio. It's a really, really, really nice camera. It can do 4K and it can do 60, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a really nice camera. But the lightning, the lighting levels are amazing. Camera is not available. Oops. I wonder. Auto focus, auto white balance. Okay. Well, I'll take a look at that later. Okay, but yeah, that's how, that's how I've been using the camera for for the for the longest time. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so C sharp script component. Mm -hmm.
I'm actually going to full screen this. Yeah. Here, like this. Yep. All right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm going to zoom in like real time. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. C sharp script. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> All right. I have clearly had too much coffee this morning. Uh, oh, no. All right. Um, okay, let's do this. So I'm going to start by saying that we're going to take a look at the component, at the C Sharp script component. Um, it's not aligned with the grid. <laughs> I thought I was bad with OCD, but I can see that I'm not even close to... Uh, <laughs> what about here? What if I put it over there so that it's like, eh, you know? All right. Open the script component, take a look at the parts using members. Uh, Okay. <clears throat> okay. I want to remind people that they should. I'm not going to go over the, the language. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Hello, this is Jose Luis at Parametric Camp. And in this video, uh, I would like to... <laughs> Starting over. Hi, this is Jose Luis at Parametric Camp. And in this video from the Advanced Development in Grasshopper series, I would like to delve a little deeper and introduce you to the C Sharp script component. I would like to go over how it, what it is, how it works, how do we change the inputs, the outputs, and how do we write some code and start creating our own basic Grasshopper script components. All right. Now, full disclaimer, as a reminder, in this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper, uh, blah, 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 blah. If I'm going to say that again, I don't want to say it twice. So I'm going to start over again. Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp. And in this video, I would like to introduce you to the C Sharp script component and delve a little deeper in how it works. How do we customize the inputs? How do we customize the outputs? How do we write code inside of it? And then start writing our very early first Grasshopper native components. Sorry, not native, uh, the scripted components, all right? And just a reminder, in this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper, I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with the C-sharp programming language. And if you're not, you're more than welcome to check any of our resources like the learning C-sharp uh, playlist that should have a link on the description and maybe a card popping up somewhere over there. Uh, and I'm going to assume that you're familiar with the language, so I'm going to focus on how do we actually develop using that language and in the scripting components, all right? Um, all right, so let's first start by taking a closer look at the component and acknowledging that it has, as any other Grasshopper component, it has some inputs on the left, it has some outputs on the right, and it has this special output called out, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And it is special in the sense that if we zoom out, we just see the inputs and the outputs, but if we zoom in, we can see that we can add more outputs, more inputs, we can add more outputs, and we can actually right click on them and say like, for example, and, and change their names. So for example, input one, or I could change one like, my input, etc. Right. And for the outputs, I could also say, for example, I'm going to right click on the output and say amazing output. And this is going to be 
super cool geometry. All right. So I can customize the names of the inputs and the outputs. So, but how do I actually script or do anything with this component? Well, we can double click on the component and then what we will get is this development environment like the script editor, which will allow us to write computer code inside of this component. All right. And if you're familiar with C sharp, you're going to be familiar with many of the things that you're going to see here. So I'm actually going to expand all the regions here so that you can see them full on. All right. And then what you can see is that first of all, what we have here in this window is a class that is inheriting from Grasshopper script instance. But you can see that we're using some libraries, so the system libraries, Rhino libraries, and some Grasshopper libraries. You're seeing that the script instance that we're working with has some fields. So it has like print methods, it has uh, access to Rhino common, cooperation, blah, blah, blah. So I will explain many of these in the next videos. You don't have to take care, you don't have to worry about them right now. So I'm going to hide these members because what I would like you to focus mostly uh, for the beginning is on this method that we have here called run script. All right. Run script is the main function that exists in every C sharp script component. And it's the function that is going to contain the code that is going to be executed every time this grasshopper component updates. So you know how when we change sliders and when we change data, all the components that are connected to that data, they update and they change. So the whatever code we write here is going to be the code that is going to be executed with each one of those updates. So here, I write my main update code. All right. And we will do that very soon. What I would also like to um, what I would also like to highlight here is that if you are familiar with C sharp, you can notice that this is a method It's a function, it gets executed by calling it and probably some something inside of grasshopper, the grasshopper kernel, the grasshopper engine, whatever takes care of going over all the all the components looking at the run script method and executing it. We don't need to take care of that grasshopper takes care of that. But what we need to take care of that of is that the fact that each one of these methods actually has a bunch of arguments. So you can see that this method has x, it has as an input, it has y as an input, it has z as an input, input one, my input. And if you remember, those are the ones that I customize right here. And then it also has outputs, but the outputs are, and this is the first thing that might be a little confusing, is that the outputs, because they are multiple, they are treated by this method as reference outputs that are passed as arguments here. So you're going to see that the outputs are actually part of the arguments of the, of the function. They are given as arguments. And then what we have to do in order to output information to them, we just have to use these arguments as references in our main code. All right. I will show you, I will show you how to use that in a second. Don't worry about that. So let's take a look at a very simple example. I'm going to actually remove this component that got a little complicated and I'm just going to drop a new fresh one and I'm going to connect a couple panels. I'm going to connect a panel here to the A output. All right. And I'm going to connect another one to the out output, which I will get to very soon. All right. So for this component, you can see that I haven't modified the inputs or the output. So when I double click, you can see that the run script component is very simple. It just has the two inputs X and Y, and it has one output A. 
By the way, I'm scrolling in and I'm zooming in by pressing Control and by using the mouse wheel in my mouse. All right, that's how I'm zooming in to make it more visible. And then what we can do is like, we can start writing our own code here. So what I said before is that outputs are treated as referenced arguments. So what that means is that in order to output anything out of this component, the only thing that I need to do is I need to assign a value to the object A. And because by default, outputs are always going to be the generic object, I don't need to care about whether if that's a string, a list, an integer, whatever, it doesn't matter. This will be able to take any kind of object that I give it. So for example, let's say that I'm going to say that the output should output hello world as a string. All right. So the only thing that I need to do is I need to say a equals hello world as a string and a semicolon. I'm going to dock this here on the left hand side. And then I'm going to hit the run script button. You can see that the run script button, what it did was under the hood, it compiled this code, and then it executed the code once. And then what I'm getting out is that from the A output, I'm getting the hello world output here, right? How awesome is that? Let me do another thing. So I'm going to add a second output. I'm going to say, and this is going to be B. But now you notice that this was not added right away here to the function. I still don't have B. When I add inputs and outputs, I actually have to close the window and open it up again so that it refreshes with the new inputs and the new outputs. So the new output is going to be B is going to be, for example, the result of one plus three. Let me see if that works. So I'm going to copy paste this panel here and then B is now going to be number four. Beautiful. And then, so, so that's great. And then let me add another output here. C is going to be, for example, what is C going to be? C is going to be the square root. You can see how as I am typing math dot, I get some uh, recommendations. So square root, I get some IntelliSense recommendations about uh, what I can use. So that's going to be the square root of 25, for example. And the result of that will hopefully be the number five. Is that correct? Beautiful. It is the number five. Okay. So um, outputting data from a component is just as simple as assigning some value to the A, B, C, or whatever names we have for the component. And this is a process that will typically happen all the way at the end of the component once we have done all of our crunching of the data. Okay. How does that sound? But now, of course, what we want to do is we probably want the outputs to be somehow related to input data that is coming from the, into the component, right? Right now, hello world four and five are basically hard coded. No matter what I plug in here, it's always going to be the same output. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to drop here a couple numbers, right? For example, in the input and the output, and I want to be able to read those values. And then for example, this be the addition. Let me, um, for example, let me be a little more specific. Let me be, this is going to be called addition, the sum, and this is going to be called square root. And you can see that I'm getting errors right away. And these errors are because since I have changed the name of the outputs, you can see that B and C do not exist anymore because I changed the name. So B should now be the value number, the name sum, and this should be square root. And if I run this code now, you can see that everything goes back to normal. Okay.
So now what I want to do is I want to be able to take to read these two values and then to um, operate with them. So this should be the addition of these two and this should be the square root of one of them, for example. So what I could do is I could probably say, well, if I have x and y as inputs, I can probably do this. I can probably do x plus y, correct? And if I do that, it doesn't work. Now, why doesn't work? Let's first of all see why, how can we know about the errors that we're having? First of all, you can see that the component goes red right away, right? So we can click here on the bubble and see that the operate the error message is that the operator plus cannot be applied to two objects of the type object, which we will learn what that means in a second. But you can also see that that very same error message, I'm getting it through this special out parameter, out output that is coming out of the component. This out output is a very, very special output from scripting component, which I would like you to think of it as a console. It's basically a console that is used to dump information. We will learn how to be able to print some information to the console and do some write line, etc., etc. But it's very useful because it gives us like this console-like environment where we can see error messages, warning messages, or we can print our own messages ourselves. So it's always, always super, super helpful to keep a panel connected to the out for reading errors, but also for uh, us to print some intermediate data. Okay, so now let's take a look at what is the problem here. I cannot add two objects of the type object and object. What does that mean? Well, if I go back to my Grasshopper script, you can see that the inputs for this function are x and y, so that is fine. But however, the type of this data is object and object. What that means is that by default, when I create new inputs for C -sharp script components, the type for those inputs is the generic object. And the generic object, we haven't really talked about that, but it's basically the most base object that every other type inside of C -sharp inherits from. Um, what the good thing about that is that some, this typically gives us some flexibility. The bad thing is that uh, C -sharp doesn't know if these are integers, doubles, strings, whatever, out of the blue. So what we need to do is that we actually need to be able to customize that the input of these two components need to be double numbers instead of strings or instead of the generic object. How can we do that? We can do that by right clicking on the input and noticing that there's a few things that we can actually customize. So there's a few things that we can customize. So for example, the type of the input, we can customize it here by saying, well, instead of being the generic object, which is what it is right now, you can see that we have a whole list here of Boolean, integers, doubles, strings, datetime, IDs, etc. We also have like geometrical types, points, vector, boxes, transforms, lines, curves, etc., etc., which we were going to see very soon. But for the time being, in the next two or three videos, we're going to stick to vanilla baseline root C sharp types. So if I want this input to be of the type the number, so I probably want to choose a double here. And for Y, I also want to choose that this has to be of the type double. And look at what just happened. So the component started working right away. And if I double click, you can notice that the scripting component has replaced these object types from double, from object to double. You could say like, oh, Jose, why don't you just type that in here? Well, any grade area inside of the C sharp script component does not allow me to overwrite it. So I can only overwrite whatever it's clear white. So those modifications, I cannot do them manually by typing. I actually have to go in and select options from the menu, all right? Another option that is, will be super, super important, but we're not going to talk about yet, is the access type, all right? What that means is that we can choose those inputs to accept just single items. And this is how we're going to work by default in the next few videos until we get into lists. Or we can choose to have that input be lists. And therefore, what we get is instead of just one number, 
we're turning that input into a list of numbers, or we can choose to have that input be of the access type data tree. And therefore, if I double click, you can see that now what I have here is a data tree of double elements, which data trees is not part of the C sharp basic is part of what grasshopper gives us. And I will explain in detail what data tree structures are, how they work, and why they are so interesting. So for the time being, we're not we're always going to be working with item access by default because we want to work with individual elements one at a time. All right. But now that we have set both of these to be doubles, then we can just double click. You can see that these are doubles and will be treated as doubles. And we have no problem in now saying that this is going to be the square root of x, for example. And the square root of x happens to be very close to the number pi. Happen, right? So that's very interesting. All right. Um, I could add more, for example, I could add, for example, multiplication, and then you can probably guess how if I do that, then multiplication is going to be x times y. And if I run that, and I hit and I plug a panel here, you can see that that's the number 100. Okay, beautiful. So that was actually pretty easy, right? Um, what is next? What I want to show you before we move on is to how, how to actually print some custom information here into the, into the out, output. And then what, the way this, that's going to work is that we have a, access to a special function inside of the C -sharp script component, which is called print with uppercase. And you can see that print can take any text object, but it can also take any object with argument. So for example, here we can say, um, hello message to the console. All right. And if I do that, uh, you can see that I'm printing this over here. Just a word of warning, print as a function can only take strings. It has no overloads for integers, doubles, whatever, etc., etc. So if I wanted to print, for example, the value of x, I will probably get an error because it tells me that the argument in line 59, so that's this one, cannot be converted from the type double to the type string. So this is a little annoying if you ask me, but uh, the workaround to this is to always make sure that if you're just printing the number, then what you can do is you can just use the two string method to convert whatever this is to a string and then give it to the function and you have it here. Or what you can do is you can use the trick of combining it with another string so that that conversion happens automatically. So you can say, for example, first input value was, that's a string. And then if I combine it with X, then X will automatically be converted to X string. All right. So you can see the first input value was the number 10. Okay. All right. And, um, I, another thing that I like a lot is that C sharp script components, just like any component in grasshopper, they can be, the name can be overwritten. So for example, here I can say this name is, this component is going to be mix bag component, for example. And then if I use the paint bucket, it's going to override the C sharp icon and it's going to write text. You know that I'm a huge icon fan, but when it comes to C sharp script components, if you don't use names that there's no way of seeing how they work differently, right? So actually for C sharp script components, this is the exception. And I like to use text much better for these ones myself. It's just a personal preference. All right. All right. So I think with this, this is where I wanted to, this is enough for a quick introduction on how to use C sharp scripting and, um, inside of Grasshopper, and then how to use simpler arithmetic and simple operations with vanilla C-sharp. 
We're not going to touch geometry yet. That's when that's going to happen in two or three videos. Okay. So I think what I would like to do next is I would like to spend some time just making a few examples and start prototyping that uh, plugin that we're going to be building incrementally throughout this series. <clears throat> so let's do that in the next video. But remember, in the meantime, if you like what you're seeing, maybe like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit turn on notifications to see when we go live and all those things. Thank you very much and see you on the next video where we're going to do a little bit of practice hands-on exercises. All righty. Okay, it's 12. So I think I'm going to take a break. Uh, um, I'm going to take a lunch break. Um, we are going to be back in session. When is that going to happen? Let's do 2 p.m. Yeah, let's stick to 2 p.m. We had 2 p.m. So it's going to be 2 p.m. my time, which is Boston time. Okay, East Coast. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate all of you and the patience that you show when you're here. <laughs> Sitting through me like back. Oh, yes, no, let's do it again. Let's not do it again, etc., etc. So um, thank you very much for that. And I'll see you this afternoon at 2 p.m. Bye-bye. Uh,